The next study looked at can FMT or fecal microbiotal transplant improve ulcerative colitis. I've commented before that I feel this will be the next application of FMT that gains FDA approval. And it's data like this that support that thinking. The intervention here was a meta-analysis summarizing nine randomized control trials of 425 ulcerative colitis patients. They were randomized to the control group, placebo, or a fecal microbiota transplant. And when compared to the controls, the FMT led to higher rates of clinical remission, nearly twice as much, 40 versus 22, endoscopic remission, again, about twice as much, 17 versus 9, but also a higher incidence of serious adverse events, 10% versus 5. FMT was more effective when delivered into the lower GI when the FMT dose was over 300 grams and when the fecal specimens came from multiple donors, therefore presumably the, the you know, highest diversity of different bacteria being presented into the new GI of the recipient. Now let's juxtapose that and, and keep in mind the serious adverse events with this next study. Comparing steroid, so glucocorticoid steroids, to FMT in the treatment, again, of ulcerative colitis. The intervention here was 122 patients with active, mild to moderate UC, given, again, either glucocorticoid steroids, prednisone, or FMT. After three months, when compared to the steroid group, there were similar clinical and endoscopic remission findings, 55 versus 48, but there were fewer adverse events in the FMT group by about half, so 23 versus 58. So we have to sort of weigh these findings where the last study found that FMT is associated with a higher incidence of serious adverse events, and those should not be swept under the rug, 5% versus 10%. Yes. We should also look here that the glucocorticoid steroids had a 58% chance of adverse events, whereas the FMT had a 23% likelihood of adverse events. Now, this is adverse events versus serious adverse events. So the context here does matter, and it's not necessarily a direct comparison because one is more serious and one is more general adverse events. But nonetheless, we want to be careful in looking at not only what are the negative events or adverse events associated with the FMT, but also how does that compare to the risk of the therapy you could use instead of the FMT? So we have to compare, you know, not just in isolation, well, there's a 5% chance of serious adverse events with FMT. In a vacuum, that may cause one to say, well, I am not going to do an FMT. However, if we look at the fact that there's a 58% risk of adverse events, albeit not serious, but adverse events nonetheless with steroids, that helps give us a better sort of risk assignment and ability to weight what therapy we want to use. And these are things that you can discuss with your doctor, but hopefully empower you if you do have ulcerative colitis and you're trying to determine what therapies do you want to use next.